Hey guys, it's Milka. Welcome to my channel. Uh, today I wanted to share with you guys my current fountain pen collection. I recently downsized by four pens, which I'll talk about later in the video. Uh, but I'm super excited to share the pens with you guys. And um, I'll give you a little bit of a backstory, I guess, as it as it comes. And so I'm excited to show you guys because it's actually kind of a funny story. So when I first started getting into fountain pens, it was because I wanted to get into journaling. And I came across all these different videos and I just fell in love with the concept. I had seen fountain pens before, but I had not um, really done anything uh, in regard, like I, I didn't know what they were called when I saw them for the first time and I wasn't sure where to get them and all of this stuff. And they weren't as beautiful, they were more functional, probably the cheaper and stuff. And then I saw this. Okay, let me zoom in now that we're talking about the pens. I saw this. This is the Pilot, no it's not. I don't know what I'm saying right now. <laughs> this is the Pelican Souverain M600 I think it was a limited edition. It, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was limited edition in vibrant orange. Okay. I saw this online and when I saw it, I was like, oh my gosh, I need to have this pen. And that was the start of my fountain pen journey. So when I bought this pen, it's currently inked at the moment. I've got it, uh, as you can see <laughs> on the nib, it's got a wearing gold uh, ink in here. It's a red ink with glitter. I would tell you the name, but it is so long that I always forget it. Maybe I can, no, I can't easily access it. Um, but maybe I'll put it in the description if I remember to do so. But yeah, this is a beautiful pen, okay? And when I saw it, I was so in love, especially at that time, I was extra in love with oranges. Um, and like, not oranges the fruit, uh, though I did have a, a huge love for them as a child, but oranges as in like, the colors, the shades of orange. Um, and I just thought it was so beautiful. So I got it. And this is my only Pelican. I ended up getting two additional gold, like, so it does have a 14 karat gold nib and it's dual tone, but I ended up also getting two additional nibs for the pen. So I bought the pen in a fine nib. Right now I actually have a broad nib on this pen and I also have an italic oblique broad I, i'm pretty sure this is a broad nib let me do, double check yeah this is a broad nib and i also have an italic oblique broad nib that i had purchased for it uh when i decided to kind of experiment but yes so this is the first pen in this purchase i purchased two pens okay so most people when they start their fountain pen journey they start with like cheaper stuff like twisbees Kawakos, uh the preppy you know like they they start with the more affordable things not i i was like if i'm gonna be getting it i may as well get what people say is good quality so i got the pelican m600 right and then i also have the lamy so uh the lamy 2000 so i also have the lamy 2000 in a fine nib it is currently inked it's inked with the pilot um iroshi zuku Oof, forgetting the name as well. You know what? I'm going to do a separate video with the currently inked, so let's not get into it. But yes, it is currently inked. Um, and yeah, so I'm kind of rediscovering. So I bought those in the same purchase, okay? And I got them on Pen Boutique. And it was great. So yes, this is the Lamy 2000. It's the only Lamy that I have. I actually had two other Lamys. I had a Lamy Safari in charcoal. Uh, and that had a fine nib. And then I also had um, the Lamy Joy uh, calligraphy pen, which both of those pens I have given to my mother, um, who is not got as many pens as me <laughs> and who I got into the fountain pen hobby. Um, and I gave those to her because to be honest with you guys, the Lamy Safari, I don't know why I got it in the in the black. Like I thought it looked cool, but I prefer a little bit more something with the pens. And I'm not the biggest fan of the way that the Lamy 2000 looks either. And for the longest time, when I first got it, this was the the pen that I was using of the three. I'll show you the third one next. But 
It was only because this one wrote finer than the Pelican fine and the fine nib of the other pen. So I was writing with this because I just enjoyed the writing experience. Um, but yeah, so I, and the Lamy Joy, I also gave to my mother. The Lamy Joy, I got, uh, the Lamy Safari I got because everyone was talking about the Lamy Safari. So I was like, you know what, let me give this one a try. Um, I don't remember if I ordered it online or if I bought it at the Lamy outlet store or flagship store, not outlet store, <laughs> the Lamy flagship store in Manhattan. Uh, but what I do know is I bought the Lamy Joy at the flagship store and it wasn't because I was in love with the pen or the way that it looks. It was just because I rarely get to go to a flagship store for, you know, this kind of thing for fountain pens too. And it was just so exciting and I wanted to leave with something. So the Lamy joy was what I left with and I used it once and never again so I gave that to my mother um that was my Lamy 2000 <laughs> and then the next pen okay in my collection which this is this is kind of funny right so those two pens I ordered um and then literally the next day so I ordered those from pen boutique the next day you guys I got this beautiful Mont Blanc uh, Solitaire. It's a Mont Blanc Moisture Stuck uh, Solitaire with a um, white and rose gold finish or lacquer, right? The white lacquer, white precious lacquer, whatever it's called with a rose gold finish and it has an 18 karat rose gold nib. Okay, this pen is probably the most expensive pen in my collection at the moment. Uh, the only reason that I was even able to purchase this pen at the time was because, and the reason I even bought it from Pen Boutique as well, is because Pen Boutique was the only fountain pen like sh selling place that I saw that had an option for a payment plan. So I had set up like a 12 month payment plan just so that I can buy, I think it was like 12 or six months, something like that, 12, six, eight months, something along those lines, um, just so I can buy this pen. Um, it is the only pen, actually, no, that's not true. There was one other pen that I had a payment plan on, but really this was, this was the, the pen with the payment plan. And um, I literally, you guys bought it the next day after I ordered those two other pens online. So those pens did not even come in and I got this pen. <laughs> and once I started really journaling, like I exclusively used this pen in my journal for the first year of my journaling journey, or at least for my whole first journal. Um, and then the, the Lamy 2000 I used everywhere else. But in my journal, I used this Mont Blanc. It's a 145. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned the, the name or number of the model or whatever, but it's a 145. Uh, and yeah, I it's a gorgeous pen. At the time, I thought this would be like my executive pen or like my business pen. And I will say it was very, very inspiring to have this pen. It's so beautiful. Um, at the time, I was like, I don't want the basic like black and just gold or whatever other trim. I wanted it to be unique and something about... The white and the rose gold made it feel more feminine. And at the time when I bought this, they still had the the Marilyn Monroe um, uh, fountain pen available. I don't remember what that model is called, but it's like the thinner, it like tapers it, like it, not tapers, but it's like thinner and it goes a little pointy in the end. And I believe those can't take uh, converters. So this is a converter. The 145 takes... Um, cartridges and converter so this is a converter pen or I keep a converter in here and the other one the Marilyn Monroe pen that one only took cartridges so the converter did not fit into the body um, and yeah I ended up seeing this it was an accident how I came across this pen but it was because I fell in love with the white and rose gold of the Marilyn Monroe pen that I came across this and um I'm just, I'm so grateful. The one thing I will say, I even called Pen Boutique because 
I had no, I didn't know anything about fountain pens. I didn't receive my other pens yet, right? So I couldn't compare nib sizes. Um, and I called them and I was like, I don't know, there's only two sizes, a fine and a medium that were available for this pen. And I didn't know which one to get for myself. Uh, so I ended up getting a fine, but you guys, this is a fine nib, yes, but it writes like so broad. It puts down so much ink. So that was one of those things that sometimes deterred me from using it. Like when I wanted to do more, like once I started getting more pens and more experience with pens, that was one of the things that kind of deterred me from using it as frequently, I would say, is just for my day-to-day -day handwriting, I write pretty small for um, for this. So like getting all the crisp lines that I wanted was a little hard. But what I'm thinking of doing is seeing if it's possible to get the nib adjusted um, with like a nib master. So we'll see. But yeah, so that's my, my beautiful Mont Blanc. All right, so the next Mont Blanc on the list. Uh, let me just find my categories to get. And by the way, the one that I just showed you guys, let me see. Okay, it was the Mont Blanc Meisterstück Classic White Solitaire with Rose Gold. Um, yes, okay. Next Mont Blancs. So, I have this one incredibly beautiful vintage Mont Blanc pen from the 80s, and it is the Mont Blanc Meisterstück 144. It is an out of print model for the Mont Blanc pens, like they don't make the 144 anymore. But this one is from the 80s and it's actually from Paris. So it has an 18 karat gold nib. Uh, I just realized this was kind of out of frame the whole time. But yes, it has an 18 karat gold nib. It's a, I don't know if you can, I don't know if it's focusing or not, but it's a beautiful nib. It's very, very petite. <laughs> and it is a fine nib and it writes beautifully you guys so the story with this pen funnily enough by the way um the reason that it's an 18 karat gold nib pen is because since this one was from paris um sorry guys i'm getting a message on my other phone but yeah since this one was from paris uh in europe at the time i don't know if it was all of europe but at least i think in france and maybe italy as well uh at the time they didn't consider 14 karat gold like pure gold or like they, they they didn't it wasn't considered like you can say it's a gold nib if it's only 14 carats so for them even if the u.s had 14 karat gold nibs the same model would be sold with 18 karat gold nibs uh because 18 karat was the start of like real like this is real gold kind of thing kind of dealio in I don't know if it was all of Europe, but at least in France at the time. So that's why it has an 18 karat gold nib. I'm grateful for it. The only downside with this pen, and again, it is an absolutely beautiful writer. Thankfully, it takes a modern converter, so I don't have to just fill it with cartridges. But the only downside is this cap. There is something wrong with this cap and the way that the pen closes it does not snap and i don't know why i went to the fountain pen hospital in manhattan seeing if they could figure out a solution if there was a way to fix maybe it was the i wasn't sure what was the problem if it was the cap if it was the pen itself um what had happened i i don't know and so they changed because the this pen has uh two things inside so it's the actual um pen like cap or whatever it's I, I forgot what it's called so I'm gonna call it a cap for now but the actual top for the fountain pen uh but inside there's something else that you can unscrew which is supposed to help it seal and they changed that for me and they told me that you know they haven't been getting too many Mont Blanc replacement parts because it was difficult at the time and the only way to really probably get it fixed was to send it to Mont Blanc but that would have been so expensive and I didn't know if if I sent it to them, they would try just kind of Frankensteining the pen, which was something I was worried about. So it still needs to be fixed. And another issue that I have for some reason, I'm guessing the person who I bought this pen from, they probably had a permanent blue ink in here. And so whenever I write, if I'm using any light colored ink, no matter how many times I've cleaned this or soaked this, this like nib, 
part, um, that blue ink still comes out because it seems to be like trapped somewhere in between the top and oh, in the top and the actual nib section, which is kind of sad, but you know, it is what it is. Um, so hopefully one day I can actually get this fixed because it writes beautifully. So that is my 144. And then I actually have two uh, Mont Blanc Meisterstück 146 pens. Both of these are also secondhand. Both of these are also vintage. One is a little bit more what you would consider vintage. The other one is just a little older. Oh, this is the actual vintage one. So I'll start with the one from the 90s. So this one is from the 90s and it has a 14 karat gold nib and um I'm just getting all the calls. One second. But yeah, it has a 14 karat gold nib. Um, and it is a fine nib. So it writes very beautifully. It's a piston filler. It's a fine nib. And I really like it. I got it for a little over $200. And it was from the 90s. And after I was specifically looking for one from the 80s because I heard that they had the ebonite feed. But it seems like this one... Well, no, this one may be, this one I think is a plastic, I'm not sure. But I was looking for the ebonite feed. Um, so I'm not sure about this feed, but right after I had purchased this one, I just so happened to find a listing for this one, which is actually from the 80s, and it has the ebonite feed, and it is a work of art okay it is it has one it's just gold tone so it's one tone nib and it's a medium nib and you can also kind of see the difference here in the um this uh, little section where you, in the body that's clear for like the ink window it's actually fully transparent where as opposed to in the 90s moving forward there's like a little cell pattern so i like that this is transparent i like it more than the cell pattern uh, I wish this had a dual tone nib, but I'm okay that it's just one tone and it's a medium nib. And you guys, this one writes absolutely beautifully. Um, it was just incredible uh, as a writing experience. And I'm waiting until I finish my currently inked pen so that I can ink this one up. I'm super excited because I haven't written with it in a while. But yes, yeah, so those are my Mont Blancs. Now, I guess let's get into my Sailor pens. So I don't have too too many sailor pens but they're not a few either the first sailor pen i ever got was this sailor pen uh, it is the sailor shikiori um in the dragon's palace it's part of the fairy tale shikiori series or line and i believe the dragon's palace was the spring pen uh but it's a 14 karat gold nib and it is absolutely gorgeous. I don't think you'll be able to see on camera the, the specks of glitter, but there is gold glitter in this pen. And the Sailor Shikiori line tends to run in uh, medium fine as the only nib size. So this is a medium fine. And um, it's so funny because when I got this pen, I was in such a dilemma because I was debating whether I should get this one or if I should get the Grateful Crane from the same line. The same line. Um, and what I did in the store, because I, I believe I got this at Yoseka actually in person, and what I ended up doing is I was holding the, both pens, and I was pretending to write with the pen with my folio, and seeing which one felt prettier <laughs> to write within my folio, like my imaginary folio, because I didn't have it with me at the time, I think. And... It was just such a dilemma, but I ended up going with the Dragon's Palace, and it's a very beautiful pen. I love it. Uh, and so what ended up happening a little later on was that I also ended up coming home, not the same day, but eventually with the uh, Sailor Shikiori fairy tale uh, line, Grateful Crane. I don't know if I was mentioned the Grateful Crane earlier, but that was the other pen I was debating about. And so this is the Grateful Crane. Again, like I said, the Shikiori series comes with the medium fine nib and it is most of the time 14 karat apart from, I think they had one line that was 21 karat gold nibs. But yes, so this one is also so beautiful. It, the shimmer on here, it kind of makes me think, this is a winter, so this pen was winter edition. And it makes me think of, um, Cinderella's like 
dress or slippers in the cartoon a little bit. Uh, but yeah, it's a beautiful pen. The next sailor that I have was actually a collaboration between uh, Yoseka Stationery and Sailor. And this was, they have a three part series um, collaboration with Sailor. And this was the first one before the other two came out. This is the Sailor, I got it in the Sailor Pro Gear Slim model. Uh, and it has a 14 karat gold nib and I actually got this in person because they were sold out online. It's currently inked as well, so which is why I see some ink slotches, sp spots or whatever. Um, but it was, so this is in a fine nib and it was sold out at the time online. So I went into Yoseka and I wanted to see if they had any at the actual store and they only had two boxes one in medium fine i think and one in fine and i was having a little bit of a debate with myself because I, no i don't i think the medium fine was not available so it was either fine and extra fine like it was two nib sizes it could have been medium fine the other one that i was not keen on um but then i found out oh no, actually there's only one left and it's just the one in the fine. So I just so happened to get the last one and I was like, it's a fine nib, okay? Like I wanted something a little wetter than the medium fine nibs um, since I had the experience with the, with my Shikiori pens, but I ended up getting the fine. And to be honest, I used it a little bit, but I didn't use it often because it was so fine. Um, and it has a lot of feedback because it's fine. And a lot of the inks that I put into it would come out so much lighter because it was so, they would, you know, it puts out a lot less ink. But I currently have it inked up with uh, Sailor Hiroshizuku Yama, uh, Yamaguri, which is one of my favorite inks to keep in my planner. And before I would use, which I'll show you later, my Twisby uh, Vac Mini with that same ink. That, like all of last year I kept that in my Hobonichi right in my Hobonichi weeks I decided to kind of come back to my fountain pens especially the ones that weren't getting as much love and this was one of them because it's just so stunning I don't know if the camera can even show you how beautiful it is the green the gold glitter flex the gold it's a beautiful pen so I have inked this one up and I've been using it in my Hobonichi weeks and I've been really enjoying doing so because um I need to write pretty fine in there and this pen does so. The only thing is I wish the ink looked darker, like it looks much more like a brown in this pen than it does like a brown black. So I may get another um, ink. I have my eyes on the Sailor Shikiori Duyu ink because supposedly that one is very dark. Okay, this next one I'm going to need assistance. I have to find the name of it. Uh, okay. So this is the Sailor 1911S Shikiori 5th Anniversary Minori Pen. So this is it. It's uh, supposed to be like they actually chose this model of Sailor Pens because it looks like a grain of rice. And this was the 5th anniversary of their Shikiori, which is the four season line of pens that they've been doing and so they created one pen that encapsulates all four seasons and they based it off of a grain of rice so it's the life cycle off of a grain of rice i don't remember all of the details i do know this was like one of the seasons or one of the phases of the life of the rice the green also and even the glitter in the cap um i remember seeing that's supposed to be like the sunlight glittering on the water that the the rice patties are growing in or whatever it may be. Uh, but yes, yeah, so again, like all the other Shikiori pens, this one is a medium fine nib, also 14 karat gold, and it comes with an ink. And to be honest with you, um, I haven't used it too often. Funnily enough, and I, I truly think this is kind of hilarious, the body of the pen, is giving very much um, the Grateful Crane from the fairy tale collection. And the tip or the, the hand rest is giving uh, Dragon's Palace from the <laughs> fairy tale collection. So it seems like the two pens that I have from the fairy tale collection uh, just so happen to be embodied in this one pen. But yeah, that's this pen. 
Um, I haven't used it as often as I probably should. To be honest, I'm not as sold on the way that it looks anymore. So I am gonna ink it up and see if this is one that I truly wanna keep in my collection after using it for a little bit because maybe I just haven't looked at it in a while. And then my last sailor, this one was one of those like the universe will provide dealios and this is actually a sailor collaboration with the Japanese stationery store Bung, uh, Bungu Box and this is their Twinkle Milky Way pen and when I first found out about this pen I literally instantly was like I want this pen so much I want this pen so much and I looked into it and it was sold out and apparently it sold out very very quickly and so I went to the Ebays okay and all the versions of this pen that I could find there were only two listings they were $800 or a little over $800 each when the original was like 500 US dollars or something um, but because it was such a limited edition uh, and it was sold out people were able to sell it for however much they wanted and I was almost willing to buy it but I just couldn't bring myself to do it when I saw the the nib sizes because the nib sizes for that were available were like an extra fine and a medium fine or like an extra fine and a fine and I was like no no if I'm getting something this expensive I want to be able to truly enjoy writing with it not have it be in the same nib size as like my other three sailor pens um and I just ended up waiting and thinking and dreaming about it once in a while. And then like a year later, I don't know, I guess I was just guided to go back onto eBay and try searching for this pen again. I was like, what are the odds that it's actually there? And I just so happened to find a listing of this pen with a medium nib. It's currently inked, so I'm not going to touch it. But this pen, you see it has like little, uh, are these, I'm pretty sure these are stars. Yeah, it has little stars. Oh. Uh, I don't know if it's picking up on the camera, but it has little stars on the actual nib. It is a 21 karat medium nib. Um, and it is also got, it's like a grayish, like a, it almost makes me think of like the way that cereal milk looks after it's had like Lucky Charms in it or something. Uh, it's got rainbow colored glitter. So there's yellow slash gold, blue glitter. There's pink, purple glitter. It's very pretty. The finial is white and it has a rodden little asterisk or it's, it's supposed to be a star, but it kind of looks like an asterisk. And let me just make sure that it's focusing so you guys can actually see it. Yeah, you can. Okay, cool. Um... It's just the lighting is making it hard for you to see it, but it is rotten and it's very beautiful. And it, it says, I believe, Bungu Box here. Hold on, let me see. What does it say on the cap? It says Twinkle Milky Way. And then there's a little star. So it does say Twinkle Milky Way. Oh, focus. It won't focus but yeah so this is you can kind of see the glitter on here and it is very beautiful and it just twists also for you to be able to cap it or post it sorry not cap it to post it and it turns into a full size basically sailor pen and i love this pen a lot so that is that next we're coming into one of my absolute favorite pens, a pen that I keep in my folio where my journal is all the time. It is always inked. And to be honest with you, I always have it inked with the same ink, which is that Sailor, I'm sorry, the Pilot Iroshizuku Yamaguri that I mentioned earlier. Um, and that is my Pilot Custom 823, which has a 14 karat gold nib. I have it in a fine nib and I absolutely love this pen. I love this pen. I love this pen. I love this pen. I was exclusively using it at some point after I purchased it. I was basically only using this pen. The only reason that I'm not using this pen right now is because um, I'm trying to give all of my pens a chance to be loved because once this one came into my life like a year or two ago now, two years I think, or yeah, it was either a year. No. Yeah, it was like two years ago now. Wow. Uh, there was a point where this was like the only pen 
that I was journaling with and my whole journal became full of this beautiful but like um like simple ink and it just started feeling like it wasn't my journal anymore like there I was missing color so uh that is the reason that I kind of stopped using it because this is I I can't really see myself putting a bunch of different colored inks in here I love Yamaguri in here um but yes, yeah, so it is on a little bit of a pause, uh, and I'm excited to start using it again. Like, I love this pen. Um, and it holds so much ink, and it writes so beautifully. I love this pen. The next pen that I have is by Pilot as well, and this is the Pilot Grants, and this is also a 14 karat gold nib, and this is a fine. Uh, this is the the colorway I believe is called like marbled gray to me it kind of looks like a um, it looks like the moon <laughs> it makes me think of the moon which is why I got it as well it made me think of like moon dust I feel like that's what it should have been called not marbled gray uh, and it's currently inked as well so I'm using this in my planner at the moment um, and yeah, I, I love this pen as well. It writes absolutely gorgeous. I like how fine it writes. Um, and it's so crisp. And it actually writes finer than the, the Pilot Custom 823. But it does also have a smaller nib. So that could be why. Um, but yeah, it has a beautiful crisp line and, and I love it. Okay, the next one is, and I actually, the same day, I bought this at Yoseka. Sorry, let me just, I saw that it needed to be twisted. But I bought this, I bought this pen at Yoseka, and the same day that I bought this uh, in person at Yoseka, I also got this Pilot pen, which is the Pilot Caval, okay, let me, Cavalier, Cavalier or Cavalier. I am not sure how it would be pronounced. This is a stainless steel nib. It just has that gold uh, plating. And it is also in a fine. And this is a very nice fine nib too. I love the size of this pen. It feels like a regular pen that you can find in a store nowadays with how thin it is. Um, and yeah, I currently have it inked up with an ink I have it logged somewhere but yes I currently have it inked up also with a dark brown ink and I use this one because it has that click top as well I use this one just on the side of my desk I always keep it there in case I need to write something on a post-it note or take really quick notes I've been using this pen recently to do so okay next we're getting into my Twisbees so this is my Twisby vac mini i have it in the the clear model here and this pen is also in a fine nib and i used this pen all of last year in my first hobonichi weeks it was attached to my hobonichi always okay this pen was always attached to my hobonichi um only this year since i decided to start using other pens like i mentioned or like to start giving love to my other pens, especially like I have these beautiful pens and they were expensive. So I wanted to start using them, which is why I this year, oops, sorry friend, <laughs> have swapped it out for the Sailor. But actually, funnily enough, they are kind of, the, they're the same size. The Sailor is actually smaller than this. No wonder, I, I got this one because I was like, I need a mini pen or a smaller pen to keep on my planner. But this one I haven't had any issues with. And it's also, I guess I never realized because it's quite smaller than the Vac Mini. But yes, so this is one of those pens. I had it also exclusively inked up at the moment or at the time when I was using it in my planner with uh, the Pilot Hiroshizuku Yamaguri because that is my one of my favorite inks. I'm just gonna be honest with you. Um, okay, next, this pen also always lives on my planner, and this is the Twisby, the, it's just the Twisby Mini. So I believe that this is kind of like the Twisby 580 or the Diamond 580, but in a mini version, but it's just the Twisby Mini and I have it in black. I got this one in person at Yoseka as well. And I always have it inked up 
with um, Ferris Wheel Press Sparkling Champagne. And I always have this attached to my planner as well. All of last year, I'm having it attached this year as well because I use this glitter ink for accent points in my planner. Um, so that's why I got one of these mini Twisbees so that I can fill it with the uh, glitter ink and not have to worry about it so much, uh, ruining the pen. But yes, so that's this pen. Okay. The next pen I have is the Twisby Diamond 580 uh, in the demo, like it's just the clear uh, model and it is in a fine nib. I currently have it inked. I'm going to clean out this ink to be honest because it has been in there forever. Uh, I don't remember a time when this pen was not inked with this blue ink. I don't even know what this ink is, um, but it's in there. So <laughs> that is my Twisby Diamond 580. I will be honest with you, I have not used this pen very frequently, so I like the way that it writes though. So hopefully with this new, re like using all of my pens rotation wise thing, I can actually enjoy it now. I also have a Twisby uh, Eco. This one I actually got in a medium nib, but I recently swapped it with one of the other Twisbys that I have. So now it has the fine nib, but it used to be medium. That was one of the first Twisbys I ever got. Then we have the Twisby Eco in Lilac. This is the one that used to have the fine nib, so I swapped those. So now this has a medium nib. I also have the Twisby Eco in the Smoke and Rose Gold. This one is currently ink with the Diamine Moon Dust. I believe that's what that is called, the ink. But yes, so this is also in a medium. Um, most of my Twisbees are in mediums, like in a medium nib, and that is just because, um, when I got Twisbees, I wasn't intending my Twisbees for everyday writing. I was intending them to hold inks that are like shading inks or, uh, shimmer inks that I wanted to really have a lot of ink being put down. And I wanted to be able to have pens that I can use my shimmer inks in without worrying about the shimmer inks messing up the pens because not all pens are easy to like, just take out the nib and feed like in a Twisby Eco and like my Pelican M600, I can do that easily, which is why I have, Put a glitter ink into that pelican for the first time so then i also have oh i have to look at how this is called because i always mix up the name here but this is the twisby eco how do you say it cerulean and it's supposedly a special edition but i love this blue i actually got one of these and it's inked up with one of my current favorite inks uh, it is one of the newer purchases that I've made, but I absolutely love this ink. It's one of my new favorites and it's the Wearing Gull uh, Anki ink. So it's this beautiful blue ink with like gold glitter. It's, it's so gorgeous, you guys. Oh my gosh. But yes, and um, I actually got this pen, also in a medium nib, for my friend and uh, a friend that who was like getting into journaling and stuff and state. And so I was like, you know what? Let me give you the gift of a fountain pen. And I got her one of those. And when I saw it in person, when I gave it to her, I was like, oh my gosh, that is such a beautiful pen. So I went and bought one for myself. And then this one, I believe this is, this is the the Twisby Eco T, but the color is, is it mint? One second. Yeah, it's mint blue. So this was also a special edition. This is also in the medium nib. And to be completely honest with you guys, I don't know what makes the Twisby Eco different from the Twisby Eco T line. That's just, I just realized the piston doesn't seem like it's all the way. But anyway, okay, yeah, so that's that Twisby. Uh, the next Twisby that I've got here is the Twisby Eco in Jade. And this is a broad nib. So yes, this was another one that didn't get too much love. I'll be honest with you, so I'm going to be filling it up pretty soon. Uh, and then we also have the Twisby Eco in this uh, pastel pink. This also has a broad nib and it has the uh, Sailor Nekyonagi ink in it currently, but I'm going to be cleaning it out because that ink has been in there for forever. Um, and then my, f actually no, I have two more Twisbys. Um, my next Twisby 
is the Twisby White and Rose Gold. I love this pen as well. Uh, and it is in a 1.1 stub and it is currently inked up with that same wearing gold Anki ink. Uh, and that is just because I love it so much I wanted it in two pens with different nib sizes. And then I have, this is my final Twisby. This is the Twisby Pink in a 1.5 stub nib. So the Twisby Pink and Pastel Pink, I actually got on an English website um, because when I got into fountain pens, these were no longer being produced. Like this was, you know how they make certain colors as like limited edition and stuff and then they or for the year and then they stop so this was one of those colors and the pastel pink was one of those colors and I just really like fell in love with those colors when I saw them on reddit somewhere and I was managed to find a website that sold them and they only had this one available in either a one point I think they only had this one available in the 1.5 stub and the other one was available in like a 1.1 and 1.5 or something along those lines so I figured or no, in a broad, um, broad or a 1.1 stub. So I got a broad, I got a 1.5 and I was like, you know what, may as well. Um, because you never know, you never know when you want to put down more ink. So, and you can always buy new nibs for the Twisbees. The nib units are really easy to interchange. And then my last two pens are actually the last two pen purchases that I had made. And they are my Koweko. So this one is the... Kaweco Sport in the Iridescent Pearl, which is supposed to be like, I think, not a limited edition, but I, I I thought that this was like supposed to be a limited run, but they seem to be available everywhere. But yes, yeah, so that's that. I currently have it inked as well. I used to have um, the Sailor Manyo Haha in here. Just because I was like, I think those two would look beautiful together. But now I have the Sailor Manyo Hara Hara in here, which is also a nice combo. So that's that pen. And then I have my other Kaweco, and this one is the Kaweco Sport Tomoya Teal, which is a collector uh, collector's edition pen. Um, and I also got this in Yoseka. So I got these both in the same day, and this one has a fine nib. Uh, but yeah, that... I actually got this because I really wanted the the Sailor Shikiori um, fairy tale collection, the Vega one, which was the summer pen, I believe. I, I forget the seasons <laughs> that they're associated. Yes, yes. Dragon's Palace is spring. Uh, Grateful Crane is winter. The Princess something something is fall and the vega was summer i'm pretty sure and i really wanted the vega which is like this beautiful navy blue with gold glitter it looks like the space like when you look up at the stars because vega is actually a constellation or a star or is it a const is it a star or a constellation i don't remember it's a planet whatever i think it's a star whatever not important but i really wanted it and the prices for sailor had gone up the the sailor shikiori's and um as like in the u.s they had gone up and I just couldn't swing it and also justify getting another sailor pen with a medium fine nib. <laughs> that would make four medium fine nibs and I just don't need so many medium fine sail. Like I, I don't need so many sailors with the same nib. You know, I wish it was easy to swap them out. Uh, it just wouldn't make sense, you know. So and financially I couldn't swing it even though I really wanted it at the time. And the girl at Yoseka was kind of like, well, it's not the same, but I mean, it's blue. <laughs> so it looked prettier in the store. So I did get it. But you know what? I don't really use this one so much, but maybe it just needs extra special love as well. Like maybe if I got a gold clip or a clip for it, I think that could change things up. But yeah, so these are my final, my final pens. Yeah, you guys, that was my, oops, my fountain pen collection. How many pens is that? At least the current state of it. Oh, the ones that I didn't mention. So I mentioned the two Lamies that I gave to my mom. I also, oh, there are two pens that have not been mentioned, actually. Where are they? Hmm. I have a... 
where are these pens? That is something that I want to know. <laughs> One second, you guys. I was thinking, like, there is something missing. And it's because there is. Like, where are these two pens? Found them. <laughs> I keep them with my ink samples. So I do also have a Twisby swipe in the um, smoke color. And this is in a broad nib. And I exclusively use this for... Um, when I do my like sample writings with my fountain, my fountain pans, my fountain pen inks, because this one is just so much easier to cl uh, to clean because of the of the push converter. So I have this. I also had one in Prussian blue, which I gifted to my mom because I don't really use these pens. <laughs> I don't use them for regular writing. I just use them for the samples. Um, which is, it's worth it for me to have this. It's not too expensive and it's worth it for me to have just for the samples because it's been really helpful and easy to clean. And the swipe was in a 1.1 stub because I didn't want to have to keep cleaning out my 1.1 stub Twisby, like my Twisby Eco that I wanted to use for other pens. So I got the swipe in the 1.1 stub in the Prussian blue so that I can do it for my samples. But I don't need to write out in the 1.1 stub often, so I just gifted it to my mom. This is not a fountain pen, but I'll put it in here. I, I got this Sailor uh, uh, Hokoro um, dip pen, and you guys, it's been life-changing. So this is with the feud nib. Uh, it has been making it so much easier to do like samples, to write, like, to write out my samples for the fountain pen ink stuff because now I don't have to dip two or three different Sailor pen, uh, I mean Twisby pens. Now I just dip this and it writes the fine and medium for me and then I use the, the Twisby swipe for the broad and I don't need to do the stub, it really isn't that big of a deal. Also, I bought these like reusable cotton swabs years ago in like Kickstarter and I used them once and I was like, they suck. <laughs> No offense to the designer. I mean, I'm sure people probably use them functionally. It just didn't work for me. But only recently did I realize I can actually use this for ink swatching as well. So I have been because you can just re -wa like wash it. Because I never used cotton swabs for ink swatching. But then I remembered I had a reusable one, so I did. And then this one is the only flex pen that I currently have. And I got this at the Fountain Pen Hospital and it is a beautiful pen it's got abalone or mother of pearl and abalone so it's interchanged panels of mother of pearl abalone mother of pearl abalone and so on and so forth it is a flex pen it is a stainless steel nib um and they could not tell me at the fountain pen hospital uh what pen company it was from it's an eyedropper pen so that means that you just you untwist it and you fill it with ink into the actual body of the pen itself. Um, but the guy at the store told me not to leave the ink in the pen because the seal of when it has the cap on is not strong enough to keep the ink from drying out completely. Uh, so I do use it for um, I do use it for my uh, ink swatching. And what I mean by that, I'll show you a little example. Um, Oh, I can show you an example of, well, this is one of, this is the wearing, ah, it's so funny I turned to this. So remember the wearing ink I mentioned earlier in the pilot? I mean, the, oh my gosh, I keep calling it a pilot. Why am I doing that? The Pelican uh, M600, and that is the wearing the Great Sage Heavens Equal. So this is based on Journey to, the, like the book Journey to the West. And I think there was like a specific uh, headpiece that the Emperor of China wore, and it was like inspired by a stone on, something along those lines. But this is a red ink with gold glitter, and you can see I use the cotton swab to kind of swatch it here. I write the fine, medium, and broad. I do a water test to see how um, water resistant it is, and then I also drop, I use a dropper to put like a couple of drops of the ink itself in a concentrated form and I use the flex pen to write the name of the ink and um, that's how I do my my swatches so yeah 
that's what I use. Oh, where did I put it? That's what I use this flex nib for. But I do want to eventually just kind of use it as a dip pen and write with it because it just writes so beautiful. Or actually get a nice flex pen. Uh, th the reason that they didn't know what this pen was was because this was a... Um, this was a vintage pen that they just so happened to have because they also sell a bunch of vintage and repurchased pens. So they didn't know any information on it. Uh, even on the cap, it says pat period pending. So like the patent is pending and the type of nib, you can kind of get some information. If anybody knows what this company is, that'll be great. But yeah. All right, you guys, that is my fountain pen collection. That is all of my pens. I hope you guys enjoyed. Do you guys have, <coughs> excuse me, do you guys have any uh, pens that are similar? Or do you have any pens that um, you wanted to kind of let go of? Because, oh, that's what I was mentioning. Yes. The reason I even brought up the, the Twisby swipe, I gave that one to my mom as well. And I used to also have a Pilot Prera in a fine nib, and it was the demonstrator one. And I gave that to my mom as well, too, because to be honest with you, I was just, I used it a lot before I got my Pilot Custom 823. That was my first introduction to Pilot was that Pilot Prera. And I loved the way that it wrote. But after I got my Custom 823, I was like, Pilot Prera, who, you know? <laughs> so <clears throat> I gifted that one to my mom. But yeah, I'd love to hear from you guys in regards to this. Do you guys have pens that you're not really drawn to anymore? Is there somebody that you introduced into fountain pens? Or are you just somebody who would like to get into fountain pens and you stumble across this video? Uh, but yeah, that was, that was it for the video. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for tuning in. Bye, guys.